Hello, my name is Terry Gregory, and I had the pleasure of interviewing a young woman uh, the other day. Um, my task was to uh, ask her a few questions about uh, being an addict. And uh, we all know that being an addict could be a drug addict, it could be cigarettes, it could be marijuana, uh, it could be something else that you smoke, uh, it could be uh, alcohol, you could be uh, alcoholic. So uh, this particular uh, person that I spoke to, um, they've stopped the marijuana, but they still smoke cigarettes. So we started out, and um, I just went over a few of the questions that uh, was in the prompt for us. And it asked, uh, why did the person smoke, or why did they do drugs? So the, the person that I spoke with, they said they did drugs so they could relax, that they have a lot of stress in their lives, and so they relax by smoking. They also, uh, I asked them, what happens when you smoke marijuana and cigarettes together? He said it makes the high, makes them be higher longer. Then I asked if they thought that Jesus, or did they even believe in Jesus? Did they have some type of religious conviction? Or, or did they consider themselves spiritual? And the person told me, yes, I believe in God. I believe that Jesus is God's son. And I said, do you think that we need to pray about this situation? Or have you been praying about the situation? Uh, are you affiliated with any uh, church or any organization, religious organization? And they told me, no, not at this time. Um, they said it was very hard to stop the marijuana but surprisingly enough, they did stop that. Now, the cigarettes are a whole nother matter. They said it's just a habit. Despite having a family history of lung cancer, um, the person says that they realize that they have that chance of, because the genes are strong in that family for all kinds of uh, illnesses, diabetes, heart disease, strokes, so, but they're still not willing to give up the cigarettes. And uh, she's tried uh, Chantex in the past, and she said she had horrible nightmares from that. I encouraged her not to give up. I told her that she needs to seek someone else to help her because the cigarette is an addiction, and sometimes you need that extra help. You need to speak to someone and you could learn relaxation techniques. You could learn what triggers, triggers your stress and, you, you know, try to ward it off before it happens. So I did ask, how, how did you come to stop the marijuana? And she said she felt she needed a change. So she just stopped doing it. I also asked her, what happens when you're high, because you have a family, does this affect your family life? No, no. Does it affect your work? No, no. Because I do it when my family's not around. Well, I did it when my family was not around. And now I go outside and I smoke my cigarettes outside so that I don't pollute the air. But I, I spoke to her very candidly and I said, I hope I'm not offending you, but right now you smell really bad of cigarette smoke. And I said, just because you don't smoke in the house, it does not mean you're not bringing fumes into your house and your family is being exposed to this. And I asked her again if she might need a referral to somewhere, uh, if she needed to pray if she needed spiritual counseling or anything of that, she said, no, she'll get to it. She'll get to it eventually. Uh, then I said, uh, why, I asked her, why did she continue to smoke? And she just kept saying, it's a habit. It's a habit. It's just a habit. It's just a habit. 
And I did, again, not scolding her, but I said, but it's a bad habit. And I said, are you aware of what side effects there are from smoking? What diseases are there from smoking? Yeah, and this person is a nurse also. She said, yeah, I'm aware. I'm just, I'm just not ready to give up my cigarettes yet. I said, okay, just understand that cigarette smoking is not good for anyone. And yes, it is. It is a habit. And it is a habit that can be broken. And then I shared with her, I tried to uh, give disclosure with her. I told her, I'm a previous smoker. So I know the cravings that you have. I know how you feel. And one thing that helped me was my religion, was knowing that God will forgive me for anything because he loves me. And I repeatedly told her that throughout our interview. Our next, next question, uh, I asked her, um, is she, she has small children. So I said, do you not want to be around your children? Because by profession, I'm a nurse. And I just spoke candidly again to her. And I said, because death has no respect of person, place, thing, time, age. And life is short anyway. And if I can try to assist you in any way, please let me know. Because this, this is really a bad habit for us. And I know this because I, you know, I've had this issue myself. I'm not judging you. You know, you you you're doing what you think you need to do, but there are other options out there for you. And I'm just trying to let you know about that. Um, I did ask her, did she feel like she should stop smoking? And she kind of hunched her shoulders and said, probably. Then I said, do you know of any reason why you continue to smoke despite knowing the cancer in your family, your family history, and what, as a nurse, what smoking can do to you? Do you still not see a need to try and uh, stop? I said, do you realize you're addicted to these cigarettes? No, 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 I'm not addicted. I'm just smoking them because it's a habit and it makes me relax when I'm stressed. So I surmised that this was some type of denial and that she was just not getting it. But again, I implicitly prayed for her while she was here. And I asked God to enter into the situation so that in some way I could, you know, help her. I have the things to say to her that made some sense that she could understand. So she, we talked a little while longer. And then she thanked me for my time. I thanked her for being a participant. And uh, she's supposed to check back with me in a few weeks. And we, we're going to discuss again if she wants to try and get some help for her problem or not. Um, what I saw with this person was they she did appear to be in denial. She, you know, everything was kind of cavalier. Probably. Yeah. Mm -hmm, I know. I know. I know. So to me, she's in denial. She's not facing whatever it is that is bothering her and clearly there is something bothering her so i just keep admonishing her to see someone talk to someone uh, go back to your church call your minister make an appointment with your doctor because there is help for you so that's what went on with my interview thank you for your time